welcome. This is the 289th meeting of the New York Comics and Picture Story Symposium. This is a weekly lecture series on text and image work, comics, animation, and illustration. We're funded in part by a grant from the Will and Ann Eisner Family Foundation. And our guest tonight is Kai Pfeiffer. Uh, Kai has been working together with Dominique Goblet on comics, paintings, sculptures, and installations since 2011. Their first graphic novel, Fleur Si Antiente, uh, something like in English, more if it clicks or more if it works out. Uh, the original French version was co-published in 2014 by Fremont and Axe de Sud BD and has been translated in Dutch and German. Their upcoming book, Le Jardin des Candidats, The Candidate's Garden, will be published by Fremont in 2021. Alongside their work in comics and fine arts, uh, Dominique is a professor of comics and narrative drawing at the School of Graphic Research in Brussels and St. Luc, also in Brussels. And Kai has been teaching comics at the Kunsthochschule in uh, Kassel and is a professor of storytelling at Hochschule Hanover. Besides his comics, I've always thought of Kai as a passionate and brilliant thinker and talker about the subject of comics. And so we'll get a taste of that side of his work tonight. And his talk is entitled Gardeners in the Garden of the Mother, the comics of Dominique Goblet and Kai Pfeiffer. So take it away. Uh, thank you very much, Ben, for this introduction, putting absolutely no pressure on me. So I <laughs> hope uh, I live up to at least half of what you said uh, or announced. Um, I hope you can hear me well. If not, if the connection gets bad, please, uh, yeah, Ben, I guess it will be you who signals me. Um, should be fine here in Berlin. It's one o'clock in the morning, so I hope people are off Netflix by now and we can, uh, yeah, <laughs> have a good... Uh, good connection and uh, in many ways, I hope, yeah. I will see how long this goes. So I, I prepared um, a lot of images, but uh, uh, many of them I will flow through rather quickly at the beginning and um, then I roughly will talk maybe for an hour and then we can discuss at uh, your convenience and, and desired length. Um, yeah, I will be up. I'm, I'm allowed myself to combine uh, uppers and downers. I will be drinking uh, green tea and whiskey in parallel. and. Yeah, I think it's an appropriate hour here. So, and yeah, I jump right in. Uh, you see here the, the cover um, of um, the first book I did with Dominique Goblet. More about that in a minute. Uh, Plus the Entente, uh, our, our graphic novel. And uh, before I will show you what happens uh, when we amalgamate uh, our uh, whatever uh, idiosyncrasies and, and, and tics or mannerisms um, to something hopefully um, better than the sum of its parts. Um, as we like to believe. Uh, we, I will show the, the two ingredients um, quickly. So, okay, I have to click on the image first. So uh, first, uh, a bunch of images from uh, Dominique. Um, I think she already did the uh, band symposium at, at one point uh, in 2014, I think it was, um, with Yvonne Alagbe, if I Googled that correctly. And uh, she might have shown some of these images already. This is her one of her books, uh, Les Hommes Lou, which is a, a collection of um, experimental drawings, so to say. It's like a, like a uh, she, she um, considered a narrative purely visually um, around the themes of businessmen that kind of a wolf-like creatures in, in the forest or that encounter um, sheep and other creatures. And uh, she sees it as like a, as a visual uh, partiture of sorts. And here is a, is a book she did with her daughter, a conceptual um, project that she, uh, I think, uh, maintained for about 10 years when the daughter was uh, seven and until she was 17. And um, 
each week they would do a, a double uh, a portrait of each other. So you've got this this crossing uh, uh, um, phenomenon of of development of uh, um, the daughter's uh, drawing skills through the years and um, and uh, the in the drawings of uh, of Dominique's uh, by by the daughter and um, of the daughter getting bit bigger in Dominique's drawings. And then there's another book by her, Souvenir d'une journée parfaite, uh, it's, it's like slightly autobiographically inspired uh, um, meditation. And then um, there's uh, also this one you can read in English. Uh, I think it's published by New York, York Review of Comics. Uh, English title should be uh, to pre Pretending is Lying, I think. Yeah, um, here's the French cover. I did actually help a little bit with production but they never sent me the english edition so i show the french instead uh yeah this is a, a autobiographical book she did uh, her most famous book i would guess uh, um uh, about yeah, her childhood and her interactions with her her own daughter and and um, with her parents um mainly with her father and uh, the mother who's only present kind of in, in, the, in the childhood memories and the father who is uh, like a presence even later in, in her life and as an adult but um, it's more like a hidden portrait of the mother the father seems more present but his uh, mother is somehow more important it's a very very difficult um, ambivalent character and um, also about the relationship with her partner and as you already see she she applies a variety of, of aesthetics um, for this work so um, yeah this might be a hint for where this is going uh, for us together then and um, yeah, I highly recommend to read this in English. And this is her latest book, which is actually also a, a collaboration. So in, in the one before the autobiography, she collaborated uh, slightly with her partner who wrote his own dialogues. But uh, uh, this one, the latest book, L'Amour Dominical, uh, she did with um, Dominique Théat. Uh, yeah, same name, but a, a man um, also uh, from Belgium as, as she herself. And um, they started this book actually before we started working together. So we s work as a duo since 2011 uh, in parallel to our solo and other work. And um, even before that, she, she, she pu published first chapters of this work. And uh, this is in, in, the, in the part of a project by um, Fremok uh, working in partnership with uh, um, like mentally handicapped um, artists from from a sort of institution where where people yeah with with uh, let's, let's say uh, non traditional uh, means can can uh, um, do their artistic work and and, and they find uh, offers a partner uh, artists for these works together and in this work uh, she she um, drew with him uh, this uh, story about some, somehow uh, Hulk Hogan the wrestler and his his wife, um, who's like, like him. Um, uh, this is one part of the story. And another part is the, the autobiographical poetry, uh, like uh, prose poetry of Dominique Théat that she um, edited for the book uh, and, and, and accompanied with um, drawings that, that describe the way towards this, this village where the institutions and, uh, in, and um, times, winter, and uh, here more of this psychedelic Hulk Hogan story and then your spring on the way to Via Salm, this this uh, place. So yeah, so she's working also here with abstraction a lot, and then yeah, me myself likes I like to do that too to work with uh, abstraction and uh, um, textured uh, um, narration. I will call it maybe. Uh, this is this is from a, like a series of of drawing I do uh, that I uh, um, think of as being nar narrative, but. Uh, um, it's really very much about yeah textures themselves, and I call it a molecular drawings to to motivate motivate myself. So I pretend this is not representative drawing, but uh, the ink molecules on the paper are the thing itself. So yes, um, whatever we need to keep us uh, philosophically um, interested while while drawing. So uh, and I, I use this this technique. Uh, um, here also for, for this uh, collaboration with uh, uh, Austrian author Clement Setz, um, who he rewrote um, 45 abandoned uh, um, literary projects. Uh, in each on one page, he kind of uh, quoted himself and, and uh, projects from his youth, and it's very dense and very funny, uh, um, surreal uh, writing in this book. And for each of these uh, uh, stories, I made a one-page uh, image 
kind of kind of um, um, uh, turning it further or like thinking it on by drawing not so much illustration and uh, this is like uh, not a drawing from from this book uh, where I imply this this method of yeah that I call molecular drawing or this is textured ink drawings um, often very small formats uh, and I also used this technique uh, early on in my my so-called career in around uh, like like end of the 90s um, onwards and around 2000 we, we formed a, a artist group called Monogatari uh, with uh, um, amongst others Uli Lust uh, was a um, part of this and um, we were starting with uh, documentary drawings and, and reportage drawings so um, and this was part of, of uh, reports about Berlin at the time uh, very much in, in turned around like re being rebuilt uh, especially in the part um, that's called Mitte and yeah, this is a Karl Marx I drew a portrait of the this uh, important street of Eastern Berlin. Um, yes, just little excerpts of that one. So just to show you this this kind of fantastical uh, textured work, I also use like to use in documentary context, sort of uh, uh, to say like um, yeah, find find yeah to to put it uh, bluntly the the beauty in the mundane or the magical whatever. And uh, another work is. Uh, um, um a sort of an essay i call it because i it, uh, was not myself on on place it's about a chernobyl uh, a, a comic essay um about the usage of of nuclear nuclear energy this one you can read uh, in english online uh at the website electrocomics.com if you google my name and radioactive radioactive forever is the title so this was kind of a, like a like a um, commissioned by a, a concert um uh, manager yeah kind of a dying um profession right now so um yes he wanted to to do a beneficiary uh, concert in front of the reactor uh, in in chernobyl and yeah everybody declined uh, only Ro robbie williams was uh, willing to do it um so instead he commissioned this comics to make uh, get some awareness about uh, the problem and uh, of radioactivity its usage and why we shouldn't use it in fact and i researched about this um yeah and made this uh, rather, rather rather playful comic uh, it was only also published in in, in japanese in um, in japan um by uh, Richie sakamoto in in a, in a compilation he made um after fukushima happened so Yes, so I'm a beneficiary of this catastrophe, so to say. And then uh, more recent also documentary stuff is uh, uh, was this commission comic from a, um, a magazine for theater criticism. They made me watch a 10 hour theater piece um, at the Berlin Theater Festival uh, that, that mingles five um, um, antique uh, Greek plays uh, together. So that's, that's uh, accounts for the duration and um, after the fact because it's very dark in, in the in the theater room um so i wasn't really drawing i was uh, taking notes and then i was drawing my experience in a in like this um a bunch of strips that you can also find online but uh, it's in german so it's published by nachkritik um and this is just an excerpt of, of this thing and um so i'm working with memory um which I also um, like to do very much, uh, apply the, the memory, the visual memory, uh, if, if it exists. I don't, don't have a photographic memory, but um, yes, it's kind of for me a construction uh, between um, what would be words in my head and, and images and uh, somehow I distill a comic out of it. And this one is uh, uh, also to be published by an academic uh, um, publication soon this is like a um called erinnerungsarbeit like a, like a memory work um this is also uh, applying memory uh, um talking about a different theater uh, play that i visited after the first one and then uh, also the, the way towards it and, and and back and and what and certain reflections on on uh, documentary uh, drawing itself it was actually done in, yeah for a symposium of uh, documentary uh, um, image making mostly um, inviting photographers so this is also an excerpt of something longer and uh, then you see I, in this one for the memory of, of the of the the way towards the, the of the theater piece on the left and the way uh, to the theater so i apply also this this this, this essay this this um, test of if i can do it in, in abstract uh, shades 
And then lastly, for my uh, uh, solo work uh, uh, in progress, um, a few images from a longer thing that might be published by Frimwork, which is more like a, a where I attempt to construct the generation through, firstly, through, purely through visuals and then text and, and, and more sequential uh, drawing um, will, will uh, be added later and um, kind of like a, um, maybe in parallel to the what what uh, Godard wanted to, for for film and he said like film is for him mostly uh, um adapt in that adaptation of literature because you always need the, the script to get funding and and he then started at one point to do uh, videos that are supposed uh, uh, visual film scripts so i'm doing kind of uh, something like that with comics but hopefully the images themselves will be part of the final feature comic or in my case so this is yeah a few um, of these imagery uh, images and um you um yeah this 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 thing is about architecture and and childhood memories of kind of abstract nightmares i had um but it turns into something very different in the end so but now uh, yeah to to the main part of uh, tonight um the work with dominique so dominique uh, as you saw already her latest book is also a collaboration but she kind of uh, always wanted this, this really this this partnership where, where, uh, of uh, drawing and writing with someone really together, not not one writing for the other and and whatever it is, this classical um, distributions of uh, responsibilities. And she tried before with several other people and never really worked out. Apparently, she tried with uh, Blanquet, if you maybe know him, a French artist, and uh, he was too kind of over overpowering apparently with his very distinct uh, defined um, coded style and. Um, but I, um, yeah, it was, uh, we, we met at a comic festival in Stockholm in 2011. And uh, after she, she asked me to, to exchange uh, pages from our sketchbooks. And then, but then through that, we, we met again and then um, in Brussels and she, she said, I propose a project for, our, for, for us. And um, I did, and I'm, for this first book, I'm, yeah, I, because as you saw, she she likes to use uh, different very very uh, um, a lot of different techniques in the same work in the same book and um, different aesthetic and, um, and styles, if you will. And uh, so I consciously, um, rather than kind of uh, putting, attempting to put together our our, our two uh, labels, whatever uh, styles, uh, whatever that is. Uh, yeah, when when I was a, a teenager, I thought <laughs> actually you know got a bit more serious about comics, I thought, when I'm ready to, to be good enough to be published, there's no style left for me to, to have everybody, everything will be taken. So um, yeah, making fun of this uh, uh, childhood notion, um, we kind of, um, yes, uh, took the, the, the opposite road of that and, and apply every um, possible um, way of drawing in this, this first work. Um, our uh, German colleague Anke Feuchtenberger called it like a, like a, like a catalog of every, uh, form of drawing possible. And um, so the first five pages uh, are done uh, solely by me. Um, okay, um, we'll flip back to, to this one. So the, you saw the first page and uh, this is page three and four and four and five. Uh, and it's very rough, very wild um, um, ex pages are just, you know, um, I'm throwing them out. And, and I really worked uh, like I do in my sketchbooks. I allowed myself to do stuff that I would maybe not allow myself to do or at a, this point uh, in 2011, if I would have planned to do it for myself. But I wanted to kind of, yeah, do something that provokes Dominique for for interesting reac reaction. Also invites her to to put her thing uh, kind of, yeah, on top of mine and, and mingle it and, and really form this amalgamate rather than, two different styles in, in parallel. So, um, and it happens that in, on this first page, I, I used um, uh, a pornographic magazine I found, uh, I had bought in, in Marseille in 2000 when I was doing a, a foreign semester and I never, never got it to good use. It's a magazine from the seventies. And um, inside there was this kind of rather uh, um, innocuous, uh, uh, um, uh, like a personal ad, um, um, this one. So with the photo, I don't know if the photo is part of the ad, it's unclear, so it might be com completely unrelated. Um, but yeah, there's this uh, woman with, uh, with a lobster, 
uh, decorated with a lobster. And then you've got this little text uh, in Lyon, uh, French city, you've got a uh, GF, uh, jeune femme, like a young woman, 26 years old, married, looking for a friend, a male friend, uh, for to go out and for friendship age not important and then this uh, plus si entente which is the title of the book is like maybe more it's like uh, yeah, if it may more or if it clicks and it, there's this double entendre also that that in in uh in french is plus si entente it's also yeah I, I would say you get more out of it if you if you understand what you're what we're about uh, about this our more un, 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 uh, yeah, unusual maybe style of storytelling if you open to that then you'll be might be, even be able to understand the book. So our French publisher said, uh, um, "There's two, two. Somebody's talking in the background. Must mute themselves, maybe." Um, and um, yeah, what was I? Uh, yeah, our French publisher he told me once, like, there's two categories of of readers or, or non-readers of our books, or either those who really just just read it and 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 then say, "Okay, I'm it works for me," and and was very um, a really interesting reading experience, or those who say. It's uh, open it and I say decide it's not readable and then yeah, right away they off they go into the night and um, so uh, and this this is one among the first pages we then uh, did together and uh, when we when we did the first um, drawing session together in in uh, Brussels and uh, yeah and on the left uh, is, is I think the first page that Dominique did and. I, uh, if you see here, um, I'm, um, uh, yeah, moving my mouse a little bit around here, this element I, I took over from hers, and 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 uh, um, so um, yeah, I took elements from her page and and uh, continued the sequence, and and between between these legs of this fragmentary uh, body, there's a, supposedly a, a dog in the dark, and and. And I, tr I started tr drawing the dog, and Dominique said, uh, um, "Yeah, this is a, looks like a bird. What you're doing?" So I st stuck with the bird. So this is all these kind of accidents that happen when you work together, and and then we flip it around, uh, the jumper into the water, and uh, and somehow the, the 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 feet here like take uh, yeah also have this little bit of a bird uh, like form maybe, and um, and then we are done with these uh, abstract uh, elements. So um, I have to go back. Yeah, here. Uh, develop it further. The bird got, gets more back, and and uh, but it's calling out the mother. So so we get into this text in in a, like a flow. In the beginning, it's a little bit like a maybe a experimental poetry, or, or um, starting from this this uh, found um, personal ad in in the porno magazine from the seventies, and repeating words from it, and. Uh, and then constructing new this and sent uh, whatever little parts and then actually yeah through this uh, um this became sort of the theme of the uh, one big part of the book uh, yeah by this accident of me using this this source material um also it was because i, I was searching for images because um i as i already said i think uh, i like to to work with um memory a lot and with imagination and and dominique uh, starts very often with uh photos for her for her drawings and um that she then will transform a lot and uh, so i s told myself okay i should do the same i should also uh, start with uh, finding some photos and, and transforming them into into something new and so we stumbled upon some photos and and this this personal ads and and we were thinking oh there man might be an interesting theme in there and then we were, were hunting on the on the french um dating websites and uh and actually then incorporating um these uh, texts uh, um, as um, as concrete um, poetry into the book, and uh, so here in the, uh, are some passages from the beginning. So I'm, I'm, I've made all the images uh, bigger to to better show them on the screen. But normally it's it's um, it's always four panels uh, uh, by page, like the first page pages that you saw. So it's just this very steady rhythm. So inside this steady rhythm of four panels per page, everything can happen. So every technique and style and whatever can can change at any moment from panel to panel it's sort of a total expression in that way and um but the, the rhythm the yeah the the the, the first mass if you would say in german like the, the in poetry that would be like the yeah the the rhyming scheme or what i think it might, might be called in english um it stays always very strict so you have this anchor and here we we meet um 
the main character of the book is only she's only called the mother uh, here in her bath um, she and she's she's thinking about her her personal ad she might uh, put uh, online to to search for a new love new lovers she, she, so she's recently um, divorced from her husband who happens to be a German police officer and um, so she's looking at all these this uh, profile text by men online and then we quote a lot of these texts here in, in these on these pages and some of them of them are very crude and 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 and, and yeah, alluring and uh, some are very um, yeah, uh, subtle and touching even. So here and on the right, it's one of my favorites. It's like uh, a Flemish guy, a very shy guy. Uh, he says, yeah, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm, I'm rather shy and uh, I like the countryside and, and children. Uh, favorite food is uh, a spring uh, roll. So I don't know, this spring roll has a certain effect on me. And um, yeah, and others are really like um, searching for, for very, um, um, Yes, uh, not safe for work, uh, sex, um, sex encounters. And um, so we, we were mainly searching on this website here. This is called mignon.com. Um, it was the best one. It was uh, free to, to see uh, even without in inscribing, can you see all the ads? And um, it was a very rich hunting ground because you've got all sorts of naive and, and, and uh, people or, or people uh, and mostly uh, also men who I guess write them their profile text on, on their on their phone and uh, with, with autocorrect and, and so it's a very improbable uh, poetry that that um, results um, from this that you could not invent so and uh, you will later see in our news project that we continued working with this uh, rich uh, source and so then uh, this man this this um, uh, potential new um, lovers of the mother um, are called the candidates and so and she invites these candidates into her house in their garden and has them do uh, several chores to prove themselves worthy of uh, eventually having maybe a one-on-one -on -one rendezvous with her if they're very 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 lucky uh, so they have to arrange books so she, she's working for a used bookseller and she's obsessed with books and her whole house is full of them and um but also she has a daughter that is kind of a a, a ghost like presence in the book and she she might be dead or she might be estranged from the mother and uh, so but at the very least what we know is that she exists mainly now in the, in the mind of of her mother who yeah imagines that the daughter might be home at any moment she might come back and um and she's a sports swimmer we saw the swimmer in the beginning a little bit and um so i'm i'm jumping around in the book and and also just is just uh, some excerpts of this this uh, bigger book that can uh, hold it up later and but it's like a 180 page uh, big format album album format book so there's quite a lot of stuff in it and um just show a little bit of some excerpts so a lot of is uh, is missing in this um, ellipsis that i'm making and um so uh yes yeah, she has the these candidates also build build a swimming pool in her garden and um dig holes dig holes in general they have to dig holes and find a, a, a dead dog that somebody yeah buried in the garden stuff like that a little bit absurd but a little bit concrete also like the swimming pool and then of course she has this very passive aggressive um, um character and when the swimming pool is finished she's um very very happy and, and thanks them but then she says like it's it's built like a, a few like two meters too close to the house and can, could you maybe move it of course they can't so it's can't so it's like a little bit of a disappointment uh, results in their great efforts so and the main this the the the, the place where they all meet these candidates is the garden of the mother of her house so this is like this this endless bosch like uh, paradise or purgatory or hell or however they they might experience it all a little bit different and they um so they come prepared with gifts this this vases uh, because um we already saw maybe a little bit of on some of the images um um in in, in the flemish part of, of belgium they have this kind of this traditional little houses uh, where they have often this um a triptych of, of, of windows with um, identical vases uh, left and right and uh, and these very strict and perfect gardens and the uh, modest gardens a bit more wild and but they bring these vases as uh, vases as gifts and um there you see they already had to dig some holes so they they frolic around in this big garden and uh, they made themselves already quite comfortable uh, half naked or, or 
or dragged naked already. And um, yeah, and also there's uh, there's a character in the book. This is uh, left, uh, which is um, called a uh, bit bush. Um, so like the the um, whatever dick bush or uh, penis bush. Uh, it's it's like a, the Greek choir in the story. So he, he's uh, commenting often on on or sometimes on what's happening. Uh, he's also in the garden, of course. This bush and um, he a can a candidate uh, comes to visit and yeah. So here we have the, the this is a flashback when, when the mother is talking to a then still husband, uh, Agent uh, Love, he's called, Agent Love in, in, in French. And so uh, that's right when they are about to break up. She wants a divorce. And then we have like a, the Greek choir in form of the, the beat bush uh, commenti commenting on it. And uh, yeah. Luckily, we are not responsible for for everything. So, so we don't only use the concrete uh, poetry of the of the dating websites, but also um, we found this this uh, this character. Um, actually, on the way to our first drawing session together, and passing it by car, and I was looking out the window and saying, yeah, "This looks interesting. This bush, this uh, clearly a champignon, like uh, yeah." Definitely, there are some old people living in this house who, yeah, firmly, f I, I suspect, think of this as, as a mushroom, yeah. And um, so we saw this one and we, we went back and, and took the photo and um, he had to be part of the book. Oops, sorry. So yeah, this is again, uh, uh, Agent Love and then some more, yes, yeah, a bit surreal scenes with the daughter uh, about to swim in a pool and, um, she actually, actually, yeah, we started rather um, improvising and associating uh, freely at the beginning, but then we, we more and more construct or the story happened to us. The characters came. This is for me the, the greatest pleasure as a storyteller if the characters impose themselves and they have their logic and their way of talking, their way of being, and we don't have to really invent them anymore, but to just uh, follow them. And uh, also everything in that we kind of uh, didn't know what it means at the beginning fell into place. So the as the, the, the daughter is a, a sports swimmer, her imaginary friends are the lobsters. So the, yeah, she, she's connected to the water element and, and the lobsters. And she is yeah, here, the lobsters are present as a sedimentary uh, um, thing on, on, on the ground. And uh, yeah, we follow this daughter and the books and the lobster claws and the mother contemplating the absent daughter possibly maybe her wet hair from the swimming and um, yeah, here mother kind of fishing for her daughter. Yeah, and the daughter and her hair taking on the lobster form, things like that develop. So it's so there's really a very, very readable part of the story with dialogues and that I don't show so much now from the, these parts because it's all in French. Some parts are inspired by by dialogues, also in in academia of, of colleagues of ours who who reflect on narration and we kind of half satirically satirically incorporate that in the story. And but uh, then the, also the story is 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 uh, pursued on this more abstract plane. But it's also for us pure storytelling to to follow these forms and their development in a sequential um, narration. So. Also, I'm mixing these pages in, in the PDF now. I'm mixed widely the two versions, the, the French one. So we were writing together in French. So I was writing my text directly in French. Um, and she, uh, yeah, here her mother tongue is French. So she's writing French anyway. And then I translated uh, both of us uh, into German artifact. So that I can consider maybe the German version, like almost the second original. So yeah, again, the daughter and here yeah, he is uh, actually yeah that that was a um a bit more of a, of a maybe a technical aspect of this book uh, we we very consciously um decided to shoot ourselves in the foot um regarding foreign editions so to re-letter these things is is yeah is torture so it has to really be redone the whole image each time more or less so i yeah some somebody um Actually, the French publisher paid uh, a lot of money for uh, a graphic artist to to get rid of all the lettering in the in the images and really do wonders. Um, even they are reconstructing in Photoshop uh, 
painstakingly this this uh, abstract uh, backgrounds uh, without the the text, but this has has to be repainted here on top of it and and collage together anew and uh, so um, also we use sometimes uh, directly collage texts from from old comics in this case it's just one page where we use that so we, and this is like um, yeah already the, the last uh, page from 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 the book is is this kind of this um, uh, corridor of love if you want yeah and then back to the garden um, this is a version of the garden it's not in the book we did so kind of the the way of working for this first book was um, to actually not really redo something but uh, and also not to do storyboards or preliminary drawings but always draw directly on the the pages uh, that will be published uh, and the, uh, the book is done in the same uh, format as, as, as the originals. They are on A4 paper and so quite small. Uh, and, um, but this one central scene of the garden, we did like, like uh, a lot of different versions of it. And then yeah, one of them is in, in the French, another one is in the Dutch version and uh, a lot of them are unpublished. And we also the cover, we did like 30 versions of the cover. We went a bit mad. and worked for three months on the cover alone. So this central image of the garden is like uh, central to the follow-up project to this first first book, actually already in parallel to, to doing the first book, which took exactly three years from first uh, me sending the first pages to Dominique uh, and um, to, the, to the printed book uh, was exactly three years. And But in parallel, we already started uh, work on, on a more like a, an extension of this book in the form of an installation that grew and grew over the years and now um, yeah, and, and was uh, um, shown in like, I think eight, nine or nine, nine uh, different um, iterations in exhibitions. Uh, so from each each space, it's, it's, it looks a bit different. So um, this was in Amiens in, fr in France and um, the, First one was in Antwerp in, in the Pries gallery of our um, Flemish publisher and uh, Pries. And then um, this one was in the gallery Arts Factory in Paris. So for, for this uh, installation, we have uh, hundreds of objects, so, so hundreds of uh, drawings on all kinds of formats and uh, 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 paintings, drawings, uh, often they, we, we put them, we glue them on, 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 on wood and they are often like uh, polymorphous or uh, yeah, uh, formats uh, from, from very small until to, till, um, uh, like a two by three meters um, big oil painting and also objects, like found objects, uh, you see a little bit here, like vases uh, and uh, flower pots and um, and uh, uh, ceramics that, that we do ourselves. And um, so here's like a, a detail view from, from the Paris installation. So just from, from one wall and yeah, we never showed all of them. So even the bigger, bigger uh, spaces, we, we never got to, to use everything. So we have a lot of, of stuff accumulated and um, yeah, the, the main, the, the only color allowed was, was green for this exhibition, uh, for this this project. So um, this uh, uh, because it's a garden, and also because it was a provocation um, by uh, um, yeah inadvertently uh, by by or unconsciously by a gallerist that Dominique worked with uh, at the time in Brussels, who who said somehow apropos of nothing to her, um, if you ever would do a green exhibition, I would not take it because I hate green. So of course she took a immediate mental note to construct a purely green exhibition. And um, and so, yeah, but it's also the garden and, and uh, yeah, in, in this use of green, we go from, from yellow, almost yellow to almost blue and also are allowed to use black. And um, yeah, there's some more of these little, drawings and paintings and arrangements and um, and uh, in this work uh, we bring back the, the candidates so it's the candidates garden le jardin des candidats uh, it's the french title and um, on all these uh, images of the candidates so also this wall uh, yeah uh, like this big wall drawing that we we create um, uh, if there's enough time to prepare the exhibition so it depends on the space and then the time uh, Allotted. And also there's, there's these potholders that we also 
use. Yeah, that's not a ready-made uh, part of the exhibition that I at first didn't know, as uh, Dominique uh, suggested, uh, the potholes for the installations. And and I for I always just say say yes because. Um, she always has uh, fantastic ideas that 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 fly right over my head often and then and then and, and vice versa so we, we have to this is really the game we have to trust each other and and working together is um we we think we we form like a third mind so it's neither her nor me it's always in the storytelling and the construction of our work is it's um me reacting to her and her reacting to my reaction to her and even the first pages i did i did for her to react to react to i would not have drawn the same things for myself so so it's always something that's really in happening in this third mind that our two minds uh, become together and um yeah regarding the potholders then after the fact i thought yeah they're kind of the like the the leaves in the garden but also like everybody's searching for love in this this uh, um in this uh, garden um so the candidates and so if you find love it might be too hot to handle so yeah it has different uh, meanings and also it resembles maybe the tears of the candidates so uh, this is uh, um dominique uh, um, at the opening in paris uh, so um yeah she brings back the lobsters here <laughs> in her attire and um and now yeah now that the next pages I'm showing are actually the, you know, the recreation of retranslation of this installation back uh, from the room uh, back into uh, the book form. So this will be our next book, even a little bit bigger uh, than the first one to uh, hopefully be published next year. And we, we have the interiors finished and, and yeah, now the production has to be done. And um, yeah, you worked uh, also with yeah the phot photographs of the objects for, for the book and um, also the the, the this, this uh, peacock uh, play a certain role. So it's kind of like maybe the ideal of the candidates as as uh, their Wayne uh, um, inner image of themselves uh, possibly, but also kind of a menace to them. Maybe an ideal that you don't uh, can cannot really uh, um, reach. So they're kind of uh, um, yeah. Uh, a bit of a of a aggressive presence sometimes in and then all, all the text now on these drawings are again quotes from original uh texts on from the french dating websites from from exclusively from men so this improbable poetry all, all in french alas for the moment so here's uh here's just this, this little ad is uh looking for a relation or like like a, a prolonged or whatever a relation with uh, uh, like tender moments in the garden. Maybe we add it in the garden here. Um, might be one one moment. Maybe. So then uh, for, for the book, we drew also a uh, uh, longer introduction in, in, in con so sort of comics form. Uh, this is just one double page from it. I'm just showing this double pages now from the book. So yeah, the, explain the world of, of this, this universe. Um, uh, yeah, by by the narration of the book itself, so so through through the candidates talking, and then here this is uh, yeah images from from the exhibition, uh, all all coming with these little um, profile texts on them, and um, yeah another element of the garden stays uh, the vases uh, like this 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 um, gifts that the candidates bring for the mothers sort of yeah the goddess the the the, the woman they all. Uh, long for and who is like a very absent strong presence but somehow absent in in this uh, exhibition version of the garden unlike the book where we're in her head somehow and now we are with the candidates for for the exhibition for the new book uh, so there's uh, yeah the candidates uh their their profile texts texts their tears because yeah they're crying we call them the cry babies also between us um because they yeah they're Kind of already melancholic that they might not find love, or, or just too pretend to be, to be just too happy or whatever. And um, so the tears, bushes, it's another element Here in ceramic form. So more of these ceramics. Yeah, and Dominique actually did uh, in parallel also to to this work uh, uh, um, a formation as a uh, to working with ceramics in in, in Brussels like in a sort of evening academy where she went to for two years i think or three years so yeah we mix up this um 
the found um, ways and uh, the sculptures. And then we also, we, we did new comics now for, for this book as like uh, intersections between the, the objects and the paintings and the more fr uh, freer drawings. And um, so again, I'll bring back the holes as another element. Now we are talking about holes in visual form, the peacocks again, a little bit of tender moments between the candidates. They have to comfort themselves while um, waiting, waiting for love. And uh, also then, as we do on the wall, so we, we kind of, uh, we do this montage work, this, this collage work um, in the book, but there I have to do it in, in, in Photoshop. So this is like a, one object, like one drawing um, on wood and then paper on wood. And then this was another element that we used for the exhibition. And in the exhibition, they can be superposed, superimposed and, uh, and um, so in the book we do something similar, but just like a, a condensed or like a, yeah, arranged on double pages. So not these big vast uh, accumulations, but like more like a, a sequence, accumulating through sequence and also little comics we did here and there that became part of this book that are part of this universe. And, um, and then, yeah, doing the sequences in between. So we had, uh, again, to bring back the peacocks. Now he's a yeah, peacock is kind of a, chasing one of the candidates and uh, until the candidates uh, is like um, disappears between the bushes. So this painting we had before and then we, for the book, we kind of added uh, the comic sequence. And then, yeah, after the painting it, it continues. And then here, yeah, consciously we, we took this, this kind of this bush from the ceramic sculpture here um, as a model for the drawing with all these candidates already hidden in this, in this bush. So, yeah, solitary moment in the garden at night. Yeah, also the change of seasons. Springtime, this would be like a quite abstract double page. It's again a big format book. Uh, and then we have also these pages with more of the of these uh, little profile texts from the dating websites and then yeah, we did uh, several readings, like uh, performative uh, readings um, when we do exhibitions and or other occasions where we then uh, yeah, do poetry, poetry readings with these texts. Mm, this is one of the final pages of the, of the book. Uh, yeah, here we... And then, yeah, the mother comes back. This is like the, this is a drawing that we then project uh, on the walls for, for the exhibitions and then and, and paint it on the, on the walls. It's like the, and this is like, this is uh, something that I don't know how we came up with this and, and tomorrow barbecue is, yeah, it's like a catchphrase in the book and in the exhibitions. And um, which now brings us to, oh, ah, yeah, no, this is now the, the last session we did uh, for, for, to complete the book was again for the cover. This was, uh, uh, we did it, um, yeah, during the pandemic, like uh, in, in July uh, or August, we could risk it to, to meet again in, in Ostende, in, in, in the Flemish part of, uh, at, at, the, at the sea uh, of Belgium. And um, we're, we're again drawing that together for the cover. And um, normally, yeah, we work really in, in parallel, and me in Berlin, here, here in Brussels and Ostende. And we meet as often as possible, but it's a few times per year, like three, four, five times, times per year for some intense sessions. But then we send back and forth uh, images via email and then we discuss via Skype and whatever um, uh, the work. And um, I would also wanted, wanted to, to, to I didn't finish one sentence about the, the Prissy Entente book, because in this book, we, we kind of, um, in the first one, we were, if, if a page, uh, because we improvised a lot in the beginning and then the, the, the story re revealed itself and then we, um, we followed this, this, this logic and of the characters and of the, of the happenings and, and then we're constructing more and more the story. But, um, and if something didn't fit, we, we painted over it. So we, we rather, uh, we, we did like direct or drawings and paintings on, on the, to be finished pages without uh, the, the storyboards, but then yeah, we changed things um, by uh, by reworking things, or, or even just if 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 we thought oh some one page could use some more intensity or a new idea, then 
we trust each other to to paint over the other the other one's drawing. And even one 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 page where we thought this is like we 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 really lost it. We really lost this one page. And 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 then uh, Dominique said, uh, yeah, I throw it away and um, I folded it and, and put it away and then I took it back later and uh, painted one last time over it and now it's in the book. So yeah, this was the method for the first book. And then now with this 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 extension in already in, in the uh, as an exhibition and the further stories we often now work it's more now a combination I think of our yeah mannerisms and our ways of drawing and and um also on, on this um, um, cover drawing, so, so often one of us does also the sketch and the other one continues the sketch. And um, so we came up with this image of the, of the, of the house uh, being illuminated at night and illuminating the garden with these uh, rays. And um, yeah, so that these rays then discover the candidates hidden in, in the waiting in the dark. and. Just might become maybe this is still of course the title missing and this might be either the front cover or, or the back cover. So uh, th this this we did already like this I don't know eight eight versions of this this image and um, this is two of the two uh, we think uh, we, we like the most of them and so this might be the front cover or the back cover and vice versa. So and uh, yeah. Going back now to to the um, to the first um, book, so uh, another thing that maybe is an extension of our storytelling, sometimes uh, uh, consciously, sometimes mm, by chance. Um, so it happens um, when we go out in the world, and the book is in the world now, and and uh, also the. These characters uh, bring back this the big bush, our favorite, our, our Creek choir. And um, so at one point we noticed um, some similarities here to this by uh, Paul McCarthy, um, his sculpture uh, tree. He did for the Place Vendôme in, in Paris. And he, um, yeah, he used this, um, yeah, the model seems to be a butt plug and uh, what he calls it, uh, yeah, in the screen um, version of the tree. And, um, you were thinking this is kind of yeah no, no way no way this is like this is like, like a year after you published the book so yeah we like to of course we have like delusions of grandeur and uh way Wayne people and so we absolutely are convinced that Tommy Carfio is ripping us up off and this uh, lucky bastard even got a very nice uh, um yeah here we show um the, the clear similarities but uh, lucky Paul McCart McCarthy got his even his skull. So I mean, this this is like the always the hate of a of a of a fine arts career is having a, f a really good nice uh, little scandal. So um, I think it was like a must have been like a, uh, one of these good uh, French Catholics who who um, uh, took out a, a knife and and deflated um, the tree. Um, yes, to to get rid of this obscenity in the midst of uh, Paris. So. Um, so you are thinking, ah, he he stole our bit bush, and now he, he's also in the press with this this vandalism. So we um, we had to do something. So we uh, um, made a little very humble uh, Facebook performance, and um, we uh, we remade cover, censored version. Now you remember this one. So this is the original, and then we redid it. So kind of yeah. Um, pretending uh, we were writing up some some Facebook like articles or posts where we were fake quoting uh, newspapers um, saying like, like saying that the book was was kind of when has had been vandalized too in, in France as was uh, Paul McCarthy's sculpture and um, so as in, in several bookstores have been attacked and our, our uh, book desecrated and and so um, publisher was thinking about a new version uh, of the cover like a censored version like the mother now um, with the nice little blouse and and uh, the bit bush um, yeah castrated and uh, candidates all with little slips little underwear and um, so and, and we yeah we really like we were doing a very very absurd uh, uh, Facebook post and and really I was thinking it was very satirical and clearly. Um, over the top, um, we were insinuating that a big uh, 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 online um, bookseller, might be Amazon or not, 
didn't say it, uh, uh, was kind of suggesting that we have to, that they didn't want to censor art, but uh, that we have to go with the zeitgeist and, and, and kind of be open, have the ear uh, on the streets and really uh, be reactive. And so um, they're kind of inviting us to censor ourselves. And then we were even quoting our, our, um, our publisher, Thierry van Hassel from Framework, himself uh, an artist. And uh, actually, um, as people who know him, a big, uh, um, uh, aficionado of 70s porn movies so um, he would not be the first one to censor us in reality but we were quoting him as saying like the censorship is a scandal but but uh, um, but uh, um, having said that we have to rethink uh, our, our, our publishing policy and and, and decide uh, uh, calmly and 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 and, and, and rationally if we can still work with these two offers so in the end of the sentence uh, at first he was uh, in the beginning was defending freedom of art and in the end of his sentence, uh, sentence he was basically pushing us out of the publishing house and we were thinking this is so cross and, and so um, yeah over the top that nobody will believe it and especially since we gave no sources never never said pretended specific magazine published this but um, yeah, nonetheless, um, yeah, even we, we continued. So, so we said, okay, also the, the original, um, the model um, for the Bitbush is of course also uh, potentially under attack. So it has to be uh, protected by police. So made another crude uh, little collage. And um, so, yeah, we were very surprised to get a lot of reactions from, from friends on Facebook that were scandalized by our um, ordeal and, and really, yeah wholesale um unfortunately believed us and yeah so um when we then uh, had to reveal that it's to them that it was a sort of a joke but also kind of an entitled joke because of Paul McCarthy but um but still a joke uh, um they were got quite angry with us certain colleagues who took this too seriously and e even uh, Thierry our publisher got some some angry mail from from some people for sense, trying to censor us, even though we thought it was so absurd, but yeah. So I had to make this public apology on Facebook and um, I became also like a crybaby, one of the crying candidates and we have put in some some advertising for the book in the back. So, and then, uh, yeah, as announced, I think in, in the, for this talk, uh, uh, after the Facebook performance, uh, then um, live, took it on itself to, to imitate art as it often does. So we did uh, the next e exhibition after the one, uh, the first uh, one of the bigger ones in, in, in the Fometo Festival in, in Lucerne was then in St. Petersburg uh, at the Nabokov Museum. And yeah, again, we did the, the, the wall drawing here, the wall drawing and um, yeah, just the Nabokov Museum. And then I, I made myself the, the arrangement of the, of the images there, the, the installation. I was working there under much uh, pressure because there was very little time and they had me teach a workshop while uh, also um, having to, to put up the exhibition myself. And it was very Russian, the whole thing, because the, the, yeah, normally I, um, I have to work until midnight at least on, on these installations, They're quite elaborate often. And then, they, but they threw me out at six o'clock in the evening because they said they don't trust the new, night guard of some, they had some excuse why, why, why the um, institution cannot allow people to, to stay there after, after six o'clock. So I was under, under quite some pressure and, and, but happy to, I thought, yeah, okay, I, I can manage, I can do it, I can put it up in time. And then, but in the midst of, of, the, of the preparation, suddenly the director of the museum, she, she wanted to, she asked me where the director of the, um, the St. Petersburg Comic Festival was, uh, who invited us for, for this exhibition. And I didn't know what it was about. So, and so and then she, she got a hold of him and, and suddenly it revealed that yeah, they have a problem with our images. So, so they too many, um, namely too many naked men on these this um on these drawings. And um so um yeah, here's here's one. Um so in St. Petersburg, I from St. Petersburg is this this uh, uh um, member of parliament or whatever it is, some politician who came up with this great uh, and, and important uh, law that exists in Russia since uh, some time, for some time now, um, that, that prohibits um, homosexual and pedophile uh, propaganda towards minors. Already like nice, nice uh, combination of 
we are there as a homosexual, the, the pedophile is never far away in Russia, apparently. Uh, so, and, um, and so what they're thinking, because they're all waiting for love, all waiting for the mother, so, and are quite comfortable um, in the garden, you might mistake them for homosexuals. And so they also became like honorary homosexuals because of this objection, objection of the museum. So um, then they said, okay, can you not maybe just not put up the ones with the naked people and just leave the rest? And uh, I said, it's not possible because then you don't know that something is missing. So uh, we, I was thinking I, I went there for nothing and we had to cancel the whole thing. But then I came up with uh, something that I think is a, in a good Russian tradition, which is a self-censorship. And um, so we, we proposed to, to put on little uh, um, non-permanent stickers on the drawings. And uh, and at first they were quite happy and saying, oh yeah, yeah, that's great. That's in the tradition of, of the, the, yeah, like in, in, I don't know, ancient Greek or whatever, or like uh, the Romans then a bit more uh, um, decent than the Greek then they had these this leaflets, you know, the little uh, wine uh, leaves, the wine leaves and uh, also green, like the exhibition. So they thought that's, that's great. I have to say, yeah, that was like the, I was talking then, the, the director did not talk to me so much directly. So she only wanted to, 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 talk to the comic festival director and in Russia you have to observe the, the hierarchy and um, and um, then the, there was this liaison between the festival and the, the museum was a guy who was a former working for the, formerly working for the festival uh, for, for the for the museum and now for the um, St. Petersburg University who is like the boss of the of the Nabokov museum and and, and he um, Already when I asked him if I can stay longer at night to, to do the installation, he was sweating. Well, this is uh, it's the rules, I must observe the rules. And he got very, very nervous. And and then uh, with this now, this uh, attempt at censorship, again, he was, was very, of course, um, quite nervous about it. And, and the, the assistant of the director of the museum, he said at one point, just to, for rhetorical reasons, I think he refused to go into our exhibition room, he just stood in the door and said, uh, uh, no nudity. So that's because I said, come, come closer. You can look. It's harmless. There's no sex going on. And he just said, no nudity. And then that was it. So we did the self censorship, but instead of the like the um, the green um, wine leaves, we, we applied this little little uh, pink uh, like uh, or neon slips and the little underwear. And um, before thinking, oh, it's a playful, playful way of dealing with this problem. And this, this dots on certain pages, uh, yeah, images. For me, it works quite quite well. And so, this one, yeah, we, we did a little bit. But uh, somehow, uh, apparently, they thought of this as, as a provocation. And uh, we had the opening, and then um, the festival went on for two days. And then after we we we, we went back uh, um, to our countries, um, we heard that they took the 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 exhibition down right after. So um, they called the director of the comic festival to say, okay, can you come and maybe help us? Uh, uh, we have to put down the exhibition. When he came, it was already packed up. And um, But this kind of backfired because um, because of the censorship, uh, you have to say uh, the, the Nabokov Museum is it's kind of funny because Nabokov is regarded as this enemy of the state by by nationalist Russians and and of course he has this reputation because of Lolita that's also what they told me because of Lolita there's already these orthodox uh, um, Christians attacking the museum so they take any excuse and said yeah, but we show grown men not not little little girls they said yeah it's the same for them so it's, they don't make any difference and um, so they're, they're just frightened of, of some, some attacks or whatever vandalism um, but I think it's too frightened. Nobody would have noticed the, the exhibition. But because they took it down, there was like a 20-minute uh, uh, television special about the case and with some um, psychologists for youth culture talking at length about our our things. And uh, yeah, and uh, Dima, the director of the festival, got a nice interview. So it all, all worked out nicely. At yeah, and the, this is the the. Uh, we 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 changed also the the, the catchphrase from from uh, and uh, and tonight barbecue to no skin no barbecue. Uh, yeah, so here she brought the, the lobster back on the and censored also the. Here we censored the, the naked breasts of the mother, but um, the guy from the museum told us that that would not have been necessary. So he said, the press naked press are are good because they are symbolic. 
but the naked men are realistic. So that's, yeah, what's this? But I think realistic was uh, another word for homosexual. Uh, yeah, and then in, in Paris was the next exhibition at, at Gallery Arts Factory, and there um, there was no scandal, so we had to help ourselves a little bit. No, that's not true. Um, uh, we just for the finissage uh, of the of the of the exhibition. The last day we were thinking because we think it was the the gallerist um, Laurent who who he didn't say it, but there was one guy posing for like a like. A, in the midst of the exhibition, in front of the, the big oil, oil painting, posing naked from behind as one of the ca naked candidates in the garden, possibly the gallerist, and posted it on Facebook, I think, and, and we saw this and so we said, okay, for the finissage, we, we invite uh, um, guests, so people who come, who are there, happen to be there to, to for a photo session as, can, as candidates, as real life candidates. So we wanted to, yeah, to not only do sculptures and, and, and ready-made, so we have these kind of, yeah, extension this another extension of our work by by performative means or like this this uh, human ready made so um yeah these two brave guys were were willing and they could use oasis uh, if they wanted so and then um but then the 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 mother appeared so it was a, like a neighbor of the gallery who who um visited on on this day and and um because the, the mother is, is a very dominating uh, uh, presence in, in Prussian Tons, and she's really like, yeah, of course, she has these 50 or, or whatever, however many candidates that she invites to do these chores and, and to, to prove themselves worthy of her intention. So, um, yeah, she's, she's a commanding figure. And, and so it was kind of fitting that uh, our visiting uh, um, neighbor was, was um, this lady who happens to be a professional dominatrix. and. and and so we spontaneously asked her if she wanted to play the mother, and and actually the three candidates already said yes to to do the naked uh, um, photo session, but didn't yet know that there was the mother present also. So they were very 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 um, brave um, to to take part. So they they really applaud them um, uh, and uh, forever. So they could use uh, objects from the exhibition to to hide um, critical parts of the installation and. Um, so that suddenly there happened this, this this long performance that she that the mother did. Yeah, so she's called Marie, uh, so it's Marie the mother for us. So and this this just turned into a, a yeah long happening night. So where we had actually nothing planned but but a book signing and a little guided tour through the exhibition. But yeah, this this kind of yeah just just arrived arrived by chance. Uh, yeah, you never know what happens in the garden when the mother is uh, present. Another image from one of the the covers um, that we did. Uh, yeah, again the garden illuminated at night, and then yeah, another um, extension of this uh, world of this universe is a uh, a short stories that are now more uh, traditional comics, as, uh, if you will. So um, for the French uh, anthology um, Nicole, by by published by Cornelius. Um, French publisher of great comics. Um, they do, do this once a year. So we do these 15 page uh, stories that are more political. So in these stories, it's, the idea is to, to accumulate more stories of uh, like that for, for, for another third book of black and white uh, comic stories. And these are more, yeah, more political because we have um, the mother do like uh, tours, um, educational tours with the candidates. So they have to, to to yeah uh, um, be um, to to uh, enlarge their culture, their cultural knowledge, and and their interaction with, with the world, and be yeah be educated by her. And uh, so, in the first story, the first story is about uh, um, happens in, in Stino Castel, as the title of the story says. And there is a detention camp for uh, refugees there. It always already was there when we did our very first. Um, drawing session together and which was in 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 Steno Cassel in the house um, um, and um, we uh, we where we saw the bit bush and um, and there um, in the end this neighborhood was 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 also this detention uh, this prison that is used as a detention camp for refugees that might be sent back back to their country of origin and um, so they're really imprisoned there. It's kind of a very bizarre uh, place. And, and we wanted to put it in the book already, but it didn't fit in Plissy Entente. So now it's like, it was the first of these longer short stories. And uh, and we um, 
the thing is, yeah. The, so, so this story uh, tells um, about uh, the candidates visiting the, the the camp, so to to interact with the refugees, to to get to know them and get to know their cultures. And but then after the modern things, uh, uh, they they didn't really understand what this this is about. And then this, they brought some food, and it's insinuated it's not, it wasn't really like like halal, or, you know, like wasn't the right food. They weren't well prepared, and they were very offensive. One one verse, a, a, a burka somewhere or a turban. And, so she said, okay, no, you have to be re-educated in the garden. So they had to play in the garden um, what they didn't get in re real life. So some uh, one group had to play the refugees. Another group had to play uh, the the um, douanier, the, like the the, um, the guards at the border guards, and um, at another group where where the the nice bourgeois people who like to help. So um, and um, so we had scenes where the, the refugees want to enter into Belgium and then the, the little border guards are there to, to yeah, kind of um, control the border. And so we yeah, also entered so like, like real cases, like the, the famous one with the hungry and the camera woman uh, like tripping, making a refugee running with his daughter trip, trip over and stuff like that. So we put things like that in, in uh, and then then a later scene that I don't show now is is the the, the nice uh, bourgeois people then coming to to help and say no we can yeah, we can we can give you shelter and this and that and that but then the mother thinks they are too nice to them they're, they're kind of getting too much attention uh, away from herself and so she she kind of instigates a big uh, fight in the end so um, and the, the the second of these stories was uh, published this year this. Uh, July and this is about uh, it's kind of funny because we start we, we wrote this story together um, right before the pandemic so about a carnival so in a real um, carnival in, 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 in a Flemish one and so it's kind of a bit surreal to to draw uh, I was doing the finished drawing during when the pandemic started to kind of draw this this scattering of many peoples on, on, on yeah small crowds so, so and this is this is uh, the the Inspiration story. Or this happens in again in a real place in, in Belgium. So after Stino Castel with the detention camp, we have Alost, uh, a city, uh, um, or Alst is the, the Flemish name Alst, a city near Brussels, with a famous carnival who was uh, part of the um, UNESCO, uh, yeah, cultural whatever heritage, and um, but then got got even more famous uh, in recent years because it's like actually a completely anti-Semitic uh, carnival. So because they they had this great idea to do. These costumes that are uh, yeah, like, like uh, you you would if you if you think in the Third Reich uh, organized by by the real Nazis a carnival against Jews, you would say it's yeah that that would be the carnival of, of ours. So it's not subtle. So it's really it's yeah I should have included photos, but you can Google it yourself after. It's um, pretty incredible. So it's. Um, so they have these big uh, Jewish heads of, of, of Jewish caricatures with big noses and the uh, so Orthodox Jews. So um, here the story is uh, the mother is bored in the garden and said, okay, uh, please amuse me. And one candidate happens to be from this uh, city of Alst or Alost in the French version. Uh, uh, and, and says, oh, this, this is a famous carnival. This is always nice. Like a, that's it's a great distraction. And then so they go go there and um, on the way in the bus, they always take the bus and they have to come, they come up with the disguises they want to, to get and the mother says, ah, oh, yes, this is too, this is like, it's nothing, your ideas uh, provoke me, carnival, everything is allowed. And so then they, they, they arrive there and this is for instance, this is like, a, a, we took a real um, costumes from, from the real um, carnival of ours, so they have this uh, caricatures of Orthodox uh, Jews with uh, um, bodies of, of um, what's the, the, the English word for me uh, the, the um, aunts aunt bodies yeah so um, and uh, in Nazi uniforms yeah they mix this up then they're, so they're, they're the demeaning anti-Semitic uh, costumes or you can go as a Nazi but supposedly they they pretend the Nazis are also of course caricatured, but they are not they are just the real uniforms and and they they walk proudly. So they yeah you can't really believe they make of the Nazis. So um, anyway, then 
they, they had this is also taken like inspired by a photo where they have the they have the, the the wall the what's it called in English in Israel the crying wall I don't know the English name Klagemauer in German so they have this this caricature of that and and so the and then you have also quoted kind of from real life so this 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 uh, a woman from from Arst who says yeah no but it's our way of in integrating Jew, Jews in our culture so um, because yeah of course there's there's almost zero I think there's like like two Jews in, in uh, that have, have had one beaten in Arst not probably not there anymore or I think there's uh, no no Jews at all so, so they say oh, yeah we make these caricatures and at the same time it's kind of yeah we opening ourselves to to Jewish culture, and then we yeah we we show them go to this carnival store and, and finding their disguise and um, they can either choose between uh, uh, like this Orthodox Jewish arms or Nazi costumes. So this is the only two choices they have. So and uh, and and before because the the mother doesn't understand she has a garden and she thinks they make fun of ants. So they she said ants are very important in the garden and they. They fertilize the ground, blah blah blah, and, and so she doesn't get it. So and then she says, "Okay, yeah, everybody will be an aunt. Uh, it's 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 great." And and one the guy from us already got into the nasty costume, and he's kind of dis he, he's disappointed. He has to be an aunt too. So and they they think the the big um, caricatures of Orthodox Jewish head uh, headwear are like the heads of the of the of the. Um, of the aunts and that, that they attached wrongly attached uh, what's what's the word in English uh, yeah, the Schläfenlocken as you say in German so uh, the, the, uh, I like the tentacles I think and they're attached on the wrong place and think oh these costumes are very very bad and so forth yeah and so on and so on and and um, it ends in again in kind of interesting displeasure and uh, for this for this comic just to show you like the process this is way more traditional now so i, I hear we write it together and then i do uh, uh, so i start the script and, and she refines it and I, I i go over it again so in this kind of way and then i do a storyboard like this one uh, and then she does a refined dominica's a refined uh, uh, drawing in pencil and I, I was inking it very very traditional like an american comic in a way, so um, and it's on the, the last page of this of this comic, and they will go home. And one of them, he put uh, so firmly this this head or on on his head that, that he doesn't can't get rid of it on him anymore. And so and um, yeah, so they go home again. And yeah, here we see one guy from Ars. This is also one of these giant uh, heads that they make for the carnival. So. They, they lost the UNESCO um, credits, yeah. So I think that's maybe the, yeah. It's like the last, yeah, last image. This is another version of the, of the, of the garden. It's not in the book. It was uh, done for a postcard for an exhibition. Yeah, that's, that's um, my little, little input for tonight, my yeah, presentation. And now, yeah, Thank you, you. Know. if you have a question, put your yeah. hand up in the chat, and I'll unmute you, and we can. Yes, I, I invite you all to discuss uh, whatever you come up with. Um, yeah, I have a question. I mean, wh what do you? Um, uh, since this all started in a uh, with an image from a you know this porno magazine. Do mm -hmm. you do you worry that comics are moving too far away from that audience that would have been happy to pick it up in a newsstand next to the next to the uh, porno magazine? Well, you, yeah, I mean, from the German perspective, we might might have never been there really. I mean, we've been there in 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 small parts. There's this, so the only things that are really popular in Germany, uh, comics wise, are humor comics like Asterix, and there's some some homegrown people like we have Ralph König who did a lot for for homosexual culture with his uh, funny comics. Yeah, he's a great uh, uh, comedy writer in his comics, but yeah, it's not. So everything that's that's a bit different is it's. The only things that got popular are thematic books like Maus, uh, Persepolis, stuff like that, that really like, yeah, mostly memoirs and, and documentary comics in a way that where journalists can easily write about. So um, everything else ha has a really, really tough time. And uh, 
and actually the, the yeah the big campaign from the comic publishers was to 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 have it called graphic novel now um so yeah comics have to be called graphic novels so we use it in germany um as a qualifier as, as like a, a, not as as meaning novel but meaning better comics is supposed to mean 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 comics with a, with a, um yeah with ambition or whatever and uh, um and uh, actually they had the booksellers like the normal booksellers they like this they they, they say okay graphic novel we can work with that, work with that the literary scene likes it and but it's it's gotten a little bit absurd like uh, just but just uh, regarding linguistic angles i have been asked by magazine to to do a graphic novel for them of a maximum of two pages so yeah it's kind of funny yeah. sometimes but um yeah it's it's the new word now for but it's it's very strange but in germany and also in france you hear some people say this is not no no it's not a comic it's a graphic novel so like scolding people if they, they use a demeaning word and um i say comics but um we have to it's a bit of an unfortunate word, of course, but uh, because, yeah, uh, in, in my youth, I was more exposed to people who said, yeah, but uh, comics have to be funny, you know, it's in the name. And um, now I don't hear this, that so much anymore, but I like the, the French say bon dessiné, like, uh, yeah, drawn strips. That's, that's for me a good neutral technical word. That, but we, are, we will not get a new word in Germany. We are stuck with comics and... and, and augmented by graphic novels so um but i i don't know if it's it's um if you still if you want to be popular i guess you have to do uh, online strips or something like short form funny things uh to be on you know if, if you want to be anything close to this visceral uh, immediate reaction that you get by, from pornography so so comics are way yeah more uh, I mean, I I'm surrounded by piles of books, so I'm have a yeah a pornographic relationship to, to books. But uh, uh, yeah, that's this, this minority <laughs> that yeah. we, many of us happen you, to um, be, I guess. Sorry, if you unshare your screen, we can see you larger for the question. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, and I'm having trouble. I'm unmuted everyone. Uh, Ewan, is that how you pronounce your name? As a question. yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, thank, thank you. Uh, hi, Kai, and thank you for sharing all. That was that was very very interesting. Uh, so I have uh, hey, two good to good to see you again, Ivan. Good to see you again. It's been yeah, yeah. five years. <laughs> um, right. So I have two questions. So the first one would be: Do you have a, a strict working routine that you stick to? And the second one would be: Did you ever struggle with staying motivated because this was a big big uh, project? So yeah. Um, I, I yes, thank you, thank you. I, I have not really through the years the same routines, but I, I got very lucky when I started to work with Dominique because I uh, started at the same time, or a little bit earlier. I started to uh, teaching uh, uh, quite intensely. Uh, it is uh, the art school in Kassel. I was a comics teacher for five five years, and um, because of that, I have had less time, so I was was doing more work. So that's yeah. When I have less time, I'm I'm more effective. I'm. I'm getting to, to solutions quicker and also because uh, uh, Dominique was waiting for new pages and I had to deliver so uh, there was were no excuses so yeah that's for me it's good to work in in these duo constellations um, because with my own work I'm, I'm I finished some yes but uh, <laughs> I tend to <laughs> accumulate and, and say okay um, yeah I, uh, I need a, uh, some sort of deadline or somebody pestering me uh, to to continue and um, yeah so so it was these outside circumstances and um, that somehow yeah when when uh, that's, some certain colleagues uh, I I know of who are teaching or doing other work besides and they they some some they have the same effect uh, like me that they they are more effective they're more uh, faster in jumping into the work and others do nothing at all anymore so yeah that's both extremes. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm I'm kind of um, how to say, I have uh, we push maybe also like Dominique we both we have a lot of uh, uh, parallel projects and some they, they they each of these needs the moment to to get to the fore and and be the one that now is getting really uh, um, finished and um, I have several so 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 kind of simmering in the background and she had two is like the the book I, I can show the, no, the, uh, the original book so this is like Dominique's latest uh, um, 
yeah, she 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 started this before ours, and it got, came out uh, um, end of last year, I think. Uh, so took took uh, she often makes does projects that sometimes by concept take ten years to do, uh, and for me it's more by uh, because of my my procrastinating nature. Yeah. So. There's a question from Jonathan. Can you un are you un unmuted? Yeah, I'm unmuted now. Oh. Thanks, Ben. Thanks. Hi. Uh, hey. Okay, that was uh, that was fantastic. Thank you for uh, taking and showing us all that work. Um, it was really uh, fun and interesting to see all of it. Um, so I had uh, my question has to do with uh, well, let's see. Um, I was interested. I, I was wondering, looking I, when I originally read the the first the the first collaboration with Dominique, I hadn't really thought too much about it. Probably because I read it too quickly. Um, but um, I, going through your presentation now, it made me think of uh, of douche, uh, the the ref, the discussion of the of the mother and the candidates made me think of uh, the Duchamp's project, uh, the Bride Strip Fair by her bachelor's even. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, partly because of the, the bride bachelor's relationship in, in that work and then the mother and the candidates. But then also with Duchamp taking that work and making it as the, as a lar as the large glass painting and then in book form and then repeating it in all these other forms and uh, you and Dominique taking your collaboration and starting it in one form and then producing installations and then making different versions of the installations and then the Facebook version and then the sort of this endless project. Uh, using the same sort of strange uh, universe with its own logic narrative, but then moving it through different formats. So I was wondering um, if you had, uh, if you had been thinking at all about the connection or the relationship with Duchamp in your in your work, or with uh, also given the lobster, uh, the, the the sex lobster connection as well with surrealism and other surrealist uh, connections at all. Yeah, I would say not, not maybe not uh, uh, um, in a pre-planned way, but uh, it's it's certainly close to our minds. So it's part of our culture, you know, like like uh, of our certainly from for me and Dominique of our uh, interests. Uh, so I, I I love to look at, at a lot of different kind of fine art as as a, as a child already. My I got lucky that my parents took me to a lot of uh, exhibitions. But then when I discovered stuff like uh, Duchamp, and I think that yeah, Duchamp is like a practical philosophy. And uh, um, so so now it's in the world, this idea that you can use whatever it is and, and really look at it uh, for its aesthetical qualities or its, 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 uh, um, its connotations uh, um, that might be poetically uh, useful or not, and and for me that's yeah there's this 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 of course there's this spreading out uh, from from Duchamp you get on Warhol for for like the, the uh, his his version of of the of this idea is to find it really more even more directly in the consumer goods because yeah Duchamp is already a little bit classical with his uh, uh, sculptures. Um, but yeah, the, the, the toilet seat is kind of the toilet is kind of forever. The pissoir <laughs> is uh, uh, still a kind of a form that we can find. But uh, um, then you get on the other side, you get somebody like boys who also incorporates objects, uh, found objects, but then attaches to that this ritualistic, uh, um, shamanistic um, um, element, and I, I like that because there comes in more of this storytelling impetus. So so. Um, Duchamp is very, very pure, like uh, proposing you this, this um, um, philosophical, you know, um, example. And, and, and Boyce is saying, okay, for me, it's, it's kind of uh, digesting it, saying, okay, now I am doing my um, very individual thing with it. But it becomes in, uh, universal again, because, yeah. And, and so, so it's, it's for me, it's, it's like a, it's in everything. It's although like I'm, how I'm teaching storytelling now and dramaturgy, that it's kind of, yeah, our way of of deci deciphering the world. So, so everything can can. I want to 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 yeah, get my sh students to the point where they say, okay, anything anything I see can can be uh, central to to a story or part of it, and uh, and and used for. And a story can also mean uh, um, like a poster or like a book cover or like whatever a web first image on a website or, or or how you navigate through an app or everything is is. Um, Kind of linked in a way to storytelling, and and um, so for me, that's that's kind of this this opening yourself up to this uh, is 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 
always a, a possibility in the ready-made, but then it gets incorporated and in, in more like a, like maybe also in literature, uh, uh, William Burroughs would have done it with, uh, with uh, uh, cut up text to say, okay, I'm not st staying with the pure concept to say, okay, I'm telling myself to cut up the text and now what I find is, is, is the end result, but to say, okay, this is like a, a springing board to the next step to refine it, to rework it. That's, that's what we do, yeah. So I don't know if this answers the question. Yeah, I like, I mean, what, yeah, the, 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 what you said about Boyce, which I hadn't thought of, uh, with, so with the, yeah, with, with the, like sort of finding certain uh, objects like the, uh, like the tree or bush that you have in the vases, and then they become just these elements that recur through the different uh, permutations of your work mm -hmm. uh, and sort of uh, provoke, uh, sort of generate story or provoke uh, different uh, developments in the story from that. I mean, when when you find something like like this this ad, I stumbled upon. So so supposedly it's 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 a, it's a, like a, a by chance in a way, but it's also I mean, just choosing something is 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 already we we make the first step into another self portrait. It's always got something to do with us in a way. It can be very very indirect. So yeah, really indetectable for outside uh, people, and also of course the. Uh, yeah, we as authors don't really exist. So, so um, especially because we, are, as I said, it's, there's always this reaction, reaction to the reaction to the reaction of the other. So, so it's like this, this feedback system. And I have this uh, with the Brissy Entente book. I have really this strong impression that I did not do it. So um, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, it's arrived. Yeah. <laughs> Through many hours of work, of course, but uh, yeah, it arrived. So. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we could. Yeah, this is a, certainly an aspect that that one could um, do another lecture on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> easily. It would be good. <laughs> so, uh, more questions. I think Jeffrey has the same question. Uh, <laughs> maybe you have another. Question. I don't know. <laughs> you can you can reformulate it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Hi, Tofu. Okay, good. Um, hi, Kai. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Um, it's, it's late for us both. You, you, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm also, also in Berlin. Berlin. <laughs> so, um, you are the late night Berlin boys. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that it's uh, really interesting. I'm, I'm glad that someone else picked up on this because it seems like a really close correlation, especially, I, I think, the aspects of this uh, mythology that Duchamp created, you know, the the constant um, disappointment in The Bachelors, like there's never any release, there's never any um, uh, consummation of the relationship. They're constantly uh, separated from, from the bride, you know? And I think there's a lot of shades of that with these guys that are never uh, able to have the relationship with the mother. She's constantly sort of like maybe leading them on or something like this. So I, I'm yeah. glad that someone else picked up on that. I think there's a lot of really interesting parallels there. Um, but uh, aside from that, I mean, uh, with the sort of surreal nature of the story, I'm interested because it, you said that, you know, when you start, it's very much um, this uh, relationship of chance. You're really sort of playing with concepts and abstract concepts, and then the story sort of comes to you from that. The characters reveal themselves and the, the narrative reveals itself. And I guess my question is this. How, how much did you leave toward the end once the narrative was revealed and once it was sort of starting to coalesce, uh, how, how much was still chance at that point? I mean, once you had the narrative in place, was there still time to say, oh, okay, maybe now we bring in another character or, or you know, the mother does this. I mean, I, it, 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 was there still a lot of room for improvisation at the end once the narrative mm -hmm. had become clear? Yeah, great question because it also gives me the opportunity to say something that I, I didn't really mention. Uh, um, our original plan for the first book was so I, I thought naively. So I, maybe I, I hold the book into the camera real quick just to give like a yes, yeah, this, this traditional, this big, uh, big uh, uh, um, album format, uh, um, French style album, like and and the the pages inside are yeah printed in the original format as as the as the. Images, but this is also because I was saying, okay, we, I will draw on A4 paper. I was thinking we will do like a, a small uh, uh, pamphlet size um, book, like an A5, uh, like with 30 pages uh, as, as like a, 
sort of a, um, exercise in, in, in poetry comics in a way, also very associative. And I was planning on for us on doing a number of, of pages of these uh, with these uh, four panels, each panel in the same format. So, and then to to cut them up in the end. So maybe maybe just on a computer, but but still uh, to separate the panels and construct a new uh, um, narrative, more like a, a but more like a lyrical. Uh, not so not, not so much uh, like a prose, uh, whatever would be the equivalent in, in literature um, narrative. But uh, uh, so I was thinking, yeah, we will reconstruct, recut it like a like a film, like from from little uh, from from its tiniest parts. Uh, but um, yeah, somehow and, and, yeah, make make a number of pages, make 30, 40, and then then cut it up and. and and then we saw, okay, no, it will be bigger. Okay, it will be a longer project. And, but are you thinking, oh, we will do 50 or like in the end, like 100 pages. After 100 pages, we will construct the story. And, um, but then it happened to us that all the, the images, the, the, the pages were so strong in the, in the, uh, the page um, uh, um, layout or the, the, the composition. That that we said okay, so it would not make no sense to cut them up. There are too much. Uh, there's too much going on already, and it would be a pity to to cut them up. And then we had like this almost a hundred pages, and already. And then, but then it took a lot of time to to rearrange the order of the pages, and then to say okay, here's something missing where we need some uh, some passage to explain how we get from from there to there, uh, or here's an idea that's not developed yet enough, or here's something that needs to. Um, we put in but it's really it kind of imposed itself in, at this point um so we didn't really um so we scripted and some parts where we said okay we need a dialogue here you need for instance the longest scene of the couple um uh, uh, uh in break up um the mother and her former husband uh, this 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 flashback we had to to yeah we had to write the dialogue and uh, to get every, all the things in that we wanted to have in there and things like that but yeah, but at this point uh, there was no no uh, place any yeah more for for us to to say yeah we want to bring in something completely new. Everything was really uh, so like from these hundred pages that we had to, com to completion with this uh, about one hundred and seventy comics pages in the book was to to be really something that that um, was really imposed by that what was already there. So that's why I've said it's for me this happy moment when you, you don't invent anymore and. Um, but let things happen or follow them you have to have the ear for it of course but yeah it's, it's um, and um there was something i wanted to mention yeah yeah and there, there are some certain pages are also because we, we break sometimes you break the the this this um four panel grid and do whole pages and then the, a few two of uh, two double pages and and, and several uh, whole page images which are more like 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 atmospheric intersections it's like when you add a little bit of ambient music to your you know your song <laughs> your album of songs to to uh, yeah to give briefing briefing room because uh, we thought it's quite dense so yeah but it all had to do with the flow and the rhythm and and the composition of what we had before us um at this point and yeah there was no more room for for free association that can could lead some completely somewhere else any other questions or great thanks comments? thank you and, uh, i don't see any yeah, I was. Just, I just read. Duch I mean, Duchamp said lots of things about his own work, but he, some way, he said he was really disappointed that people took his ready-made as an aesthetic. He thought that was just to be the end of art, not a a new aesthetic. So I don't know what he would make of your comics. I think he would. Uh, <laughs> Say this is go play do something else go play chess. I mean, he kind of contradicted himself, no? In the and end, he when he made the the, the small the, the 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 museum, all his works in in small format in yeah. the in the yeah, he had to make suitcase. A Somebody yeah. there's a great interview with him on YouTube mm. where he's um he, he's on some talk show and he mentions um that he has a a new uh, set of prints for sale. And the mm -hmm. interviewer said, I thought you said art was finished. It was dead. Well, why are you? <laughs> and he said, well, he didn't really know what to say. He was just caught up in his own stories. And he said, I have to, otherwise I go crazy. I have something to do. 
So he, had, he didn't have a good answer, not for someone who's supposed to be a, a philosopher of... Uh, yeah, sometimes it's... Of, I think, no, I think the Dada movement, all this stuff should have, it was really um, an end, uh, dead end. They wanted it to be a kind of people to move on to other things. I mean, yeah, aesthetic, I guess. Maybe. Aesthetic yeah. was a kind of hopeless thing to, but I don't know, that was a, there are lots of dead ends in the history of human activity and, uh, <laughs> I don't think, I think the great thing about comics are is it's such an ancient form that nobody's saying we're coming up with a new thing to do, telling stories with pictures and text. It's, it was happening, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah for me, it's, it's the normal, it's the, the kind of default case. It's the most ancient thing you can do with your time. Yeah. So nobody's proposing this is advanced art in any way. It just can be entertaining. Or not, or you know, or, or has no, or can find an audience. Maybe it won't find an audience, but uh, but I don't think it, it's part of the um, the idea of art as a moving thing, thing that goes develops in any. Yeah, but I, I think yeah, this is also something I'm, I was contemplating, and now, now that I'm, I'm have to teach. Uh, storytelling also in a more general way uh, in my new. Uh, yeah, assignment. Uh, Non-cartoonists. Yeah, it's, it's for everyone. So, so some of them are drawing, some of them are making uh, more working with photo photography, film, graphic design. So it's really for everybody, and I, it's a, a I especially like about it. And um, in one of the the seminars, I kind of inherited uh, the these uh, like free seminars this semester, and they will change the next one. But but uh, um, so so one of them I have to do is uh, is called. Um, Intermedial uh, narr narr theory of uh, intermedial narration, or intermedial narration theory, and uh, and so yeah, I mean um, comics is by 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 design intermedial. So uh, we, we have several media in there already, but but then yeah, every film, every theater, uh, literature is already already part of it, and. Uh, um, when you do a reading, I mean, then then you go out of the of the book and out of the text into the performance, and um, and then also an example I was showing to my students right recently is is uh, uh, Tristram Shandy. When you, I mean, see, like it's one of the first uh, novels. I mean, around the time this, uh, Tristram Shandy was published uh, in the, in the in the eighteenth um, century, I think it was really like a like. Um, like this, this normally the tradition was the the the, the uh, novel constructed of fictional letters, and so I think it was one of the first who was more, more outright novelistic as you understand it today. But but it's already postmodern because there's like this unreliable, uh, playful narrator who's who's making up, up whatever he wants, and and it's even co incorporates this one this book, old book incorporates abstract uh, uh, imagery like uh, the, the black page and stuff like that and if you do it today in literature literature if you, if you incorporate any image as a, as a novelist in your novel you're still considered experimental it's you know it's Funny, it's yeah. um and, and and for instance when when i did this this book here with uh, clement sets uh, this little book with the i mean it's, uh, 50 uh, 45 texts of one page 45 drawings of one page and some drawings Can around can we yeah. see what that looks like? So you can see. Uh, uh, so we've got some end papers, and then we get uh, introductions, and then we get uh, right. Uh, da, da, da. Um, yeah, this is introductory text. So you always have like a one, one or one and a half page text, and 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 this uh, full page images. And I gotta say. Um, it was great to work with Clemens uh, sets and, and with the publishing house is so calm, great German publishing house and very, very nice to work with. But uh, um, reception wise, so um, I think 90% of the, of the reviews um, neglected to mention that there are, there are images in the book, even if it's 50% of the, so, so when they were at the end of explaining the concept of the author of, of his retelling of his abandoned uh, literary project of his youth, there was no more, no more time to, you know, no more space to, to talk about the drawings. So the, the, the most elaborate uh, um, mentions were like, 
with congenial drawings by Kai Pfeiffer. So this was like the longest trace I got, I think. So I think, okay, to, when Clement said, oh, let's do another book, I was saying, okay, maybe we have to do a comic now. Yeah, that's <laughs> because then problem. at least they cannot ignore the drawings. Uh, a problem with, with uh, illustrated text is there is a, there's a um, clear division of labor and then a competition. They wanted to talk about the story. They could have talked just about the drawings and then, I mean, but yeah, it's kind of, unless they're yeah. blended together, right? They don't know. It's a weird thing at this late point in comic history. Yeah, I mean, the literature world had, has mostly no language for imagery. Um, yeah. It's also a problem that we have with comics that there are so few, there's like like maybe five people in the world who can really r write about comics uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that's that's interesting for me. So, so yeah, a lot who are get close enough. So those continue everybody, but uh, um, yeah, it's, it's very rare that somebody has an integrative re review, deep view of the medium. It's not, so, so most people in Germany who write about comics are, are coming from literature or from journalism and, uh, yeah. and they will tend to write about a plot that, that can be retold in words and write mainly about, yeah, they, 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 they follow the words in the comic. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they, if the comic is like, drawn even naively it, uh, like in a non-traditional way maybe looks a little bit painterly then it's artistic and so you know they, they f it's there's just no um really um yeah but it could be because images defy language so you can't yeah. say two inches off the bottom of a page with a you, know, you don't want to describe it well then uh, that's what language can do I don't know. Yeah, there's a whole issue of, you know, how can language mm. even approximate um, what's happening in a drawing? You know, how right. Do you, why do you, how can mm. you, or why would you want to? So, yeah, that's... Yeah. That's I mean, I think that there is a possibility to, to develop something, to say something interesting about, about the drawings, not yeah, really creating them with text, but... Uh, but uh, um, refer to the history of drawing. Say. I mean, we have we have to, this problem from both sides because we have to, from literature is kind of like often the drawings are looked at in a naive way, often in a positive way, but really with a little understanding. Uh, and and from from fine art side, uh, there's also a lot of misunderstandings when you use a certain uh, um, painterly methods, but for storytelling, and they have a really a very different uh, context. Now they are looked at often as part of the development inside of fine arts and then it's kind of you know when for, for me that the example i always, always give for this is would be uh, matotti when he's using certain ways of painting for narration for me then that's interesting that's 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 a new language that he established for himself and, and developed in the 80s but when the, the same thing is now when he hangs the same thing as a, as a, as a painting in the gallery it's kind of a, a bit yeah, it's suddenly very traditional uh, or, or even a little bit so, um, backwards in a way. What do you sell at those exhibitions? Is there anything for sale or are they just... Exhibitions? Well, it's, it's, yeah, we sell not much because it's... No, is, it's, that, is it for sale or is the work... It's for sale, yeah, yeah. You yeah, have to yeah. buy the whole thing then. The whole uh, yeah, not, not for the exhibition. So for, for the first book, Blissy Entente, I think because all the pages are really very different, uh, we refuse to sell uh, individual pages. So if one, so the most realistic way is would be to one day if you kind of kind of think, okay, now we're getting old, so we have to give it for free to to an institution that takes care of it or something like that, uh, or or somebody, uh, uh, yeah, collector with means buys the whole thing. But I think it has to stay together because it's not like like. Uh, Right. Yeah, the other colleagues who have, have many, uh, like, a, I'm also fascinated by, by people who have this extremely defined uh, um, uh, aesthetic and, 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 um, and stick to it their whole life, like uh, Jost Swart or like uh, Jacques Tardy or think people like who refine themselves through, through, through like, over 30 years. You maybe see like a, this, this very slow development. I think this, this meditative uh, as, uh, approach uh, very fascinating because, because I'm different, but, but then I, for a work that's more less unified, I would say, okay, um, or that's more unified aesthetically, I would say more homogeneous, I would say I can, can give away individual pages, but for Plusie Entente, I cannot break up the body of work. So, but of the exhibition, we, we try to, at the Arts Factory Gallery exhibition, to suggest to people that they, they buy um, a little 
sub installations you know you can pick this and that and like like four or five things and, and make your own little installation but it's kind of you're in the wrong um you we have the wrong audience for this because we we yeah exhibit in in galleries that are connected to this kind of um, thing that's more experimental comics or a, a sort of a free uh, style illustration in a way so where people really are kind of object wise are very conservative they want to have a framed right. iconic image like that and not something complicated so uh, yeah commercially it doesn't work but it's not uh, yeah we didn't think about it beforehand and and yeah it's not like we expected to to make our living from it so um from from the sales but it's just like an observation and it's uh, also a pity for the galleries who exhibit us and uh, and kind of uh, have maybe a harder time making rent for the demands that you thank you we are on display but uh yeah but but dominique sold a, a very big uh very expensive uh, uh drawing in the gallery of art factory gallery so they, they made back some so money so uh, yeah. it was like a yeah the the one thing that that works for uh, in this case collectors with more space because it was really big but um yeah i mean sales of originals are a big uh, theme now a big um bigger bigger growing thing now in at least in france maybe in germany not so much right yeah i don't know no, it was, I mean, it was um, the reason some people of my generation made comics is because they would never want to be connected with the idea of selling original objects, like that whole art object thing. They wanted just reproduction, but everybody. Yeah. So it I, is. It's, a, it's a very different, um, I might have been too ideologically pure an idea, but it was driving a lot of it the idea of making art for reproduction not for absolutely i mean the, the, the comic is the, the printed book also for for this for the plus young town book this 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 one is the original for me so the yes the, yeah there is the the, the, the original tra original drawings which are interesting to exhibit because of their kind of like textual qualities but i'm i'm only happy if i have a, a printed thing I would be the, like to bring it back to Duchamp. I would be the the guy, yeah, who wants his little um, his suitcase uh, thing with, with everything neatly packed up. And and I actually uh, exhibitions stress me out because um, I have to suck it all in 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 in, in, in little time. So I'm always um, already very very um, calming down when I see there's a good catalog or something. And uh, and uh, with our installation that we translated in a real book now is for me of course uh, very essential to to have this uh, um, and this is all printed on you know like acid free paper it will last for hundreds of years and so the you know <laughs> this even if if uh, Duchamp wanted to abandon objects you can never get rid of them so in a way uh, and even yeah also Duchamp because I, I will imagine that it's for the outward it makes a difference if if it's his pissoir or or yeah, a re a real one because his is not real anymore. Right. It's not signed and, and it's culturalized. It's kind of yeah. Uh, in a way, it's also desecrated. In if you want, you know, it's like it, uh, does it become holy if it enters in the in in the museum, or is it kind of desecrated because it's kind of uh, it's 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 deprived from the urine. I mean the the yeah, it's the the. The piss has to go into the thing to to make it itself. Right, so it's now, right? it's lost its soul, maybe. Yeah, that's like right tribal art taken out of its uh, out of its function, right? So then, and then boys doing it in the, uh, adding the ritualistic uh, narrative component because narrative because yeah he invented most likely much of his uh, mysterious backstory as this kind of being rescued by some shaman like people in Siberia from when he when he had this uh, yeah came down with this uh, plane in World War Two and and being put into yeah fed around him fed and and and, and felt and whatever uh, but yeah he made it up which is all the better I think and uh, also the fat now stings you know when you when you go see his installations Today, it's this old fat, uh, yeah, it's transformed. And of course, it's interesting that it's still the old fat. If you, if you put in new fat, it's, it's not the same story in this fat. So it's... Um, nice fat, nice fat. Right? Yeah. 
Maybe uh, that could, I, I, I would like to, to do it. Like, I, I made it as a student, as an art student, a little choky thing. I don't remember which form I gave it, but we, we joked around doing a, a boys remake with margarine. So, um, yeah, um, you have to. So did you, when you went to school, were they teaching comics already? In, yeah, they were teaching. Um, Not in <laughs> Germany, maybe? I don't remember. We were uh, teaching comics to our <laughs> our teachers, uh, so they were open. We were lucky. We had a um, we had a great teacher for drawing, Nana Meyer, in uh, the art school, uh, Berlin Weissensee. She's a wonderful artist and and open to comics. Uh, uh, she was, and so we entered. We brought uh, the comics project to her, and um, she let us do them. And she she liked to talk about it, but but she she could not re really read comics, so um, it was interesting. That um, when we were showing her Chris Ware's comics, she would say, find it, she found it very fascinating. But then she said at one point, "Yeah, but why are there so many images pro on every page? I would one of them would be enough for me." So she was looking at it like, like you know, like uh, paintings. So um, okay. she didn't get the sequence really, as she couldn't really read the sequence. I think it's some. If you don't read comics as a child, you have a harder time apparently later on to, to get the, the hang of, of the language. Yeah. No, I yeah, I guess I, I, people sometimes say to me, what do you read first? How do you do it? And I say, you know, you have that pro same problem in a, looking at the titles in a gallery. You go, do you look at the painting or do you look at the name? I mean, you figure it, you put it together somehow. Yeah, people have, have made several uh, different theories about it. So, so the one one uh, German f comics theorist, a little bit. Uh, I, I think he, his point was that you you look at the image first, then you decipher the text, and by doing that, you you look at the image again and you discover new things. And so, so it's like a, and I mean, uh, yeah, Matotti um, uh, told uh, talked about it once in when he. Uh, uh, about his work on fires and there's this one page that was uh, is quite abstract and was uh, originally without text and then he, he he was thinking up some some text to go with it because he was thinking okay if i put in this one page where seemingly nothing uh, um, figurative is happening with, with uh, and no text then people would just flip over it so he, he wanted to, to slow them down by by putting text in which is, yeah, it's like really the way that comics artists and uh, yeah, I guess other artists, yeah, we often think about the art that you, you think about the, the yeah, what, what it creates in, in the, you know, with yourself as a first receptionist of your own thing. But, but yeah, sometimes the time is, is a factor sometimes for comics also to, to think about, yeah, how, how fast will somebody look at something? Can I put in something hidden or is it more like a, I'm, am I perceived more as a storyteller that, that that's going to be read quickly? Uh, yeah, it can be very different for comics, I would imagine. Right. Yeah. So we don't have this, this fixed, defined time as uh, as movies have. That's true. Or right, or theater. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, li I mean, um, I think uh, I like how how theater runs. But, uh, that it, that it can be over in a you know, certain time frame, but um, yeah, yeah. but you know I think it's the I think what's driving a lot of comics work today are just the the economics of it. That if it's if there's no publisher that has the money to who's subsidizing it, and I don't know if you if you're getting subsidies in in Germany to make comics. Um, we are very extremely little, almost nothing. So we get now in Berlin, we have uh, um, for a few years now uh, um, grants, comics grants, especially for comics. Before that, there were two friends of mine got a like, like, literature grant for comics. But then they decided to, yeah, to finally um, install uh, something for comics specifically. But it's only for artists. There's nothing yet for for the publishers. So, so publishing houses got got some uh, awards uh, with, that came with money from from the city and from the state. But yeah, the model. Not is, yeah. Yeah. One of the models that's big now in journalism, and it could also be in comics. I don't think too many cartoonists are doing it. Is the 
you know, the, um, the reader subscription model, the oldest model, you know, in literature, where, where your readers give you $50 a year and you, they can look at everything you make and you can make a living. That's a model that's coming up. A lot of journalists, especially, are leaving um, mm -hmm. magazines and they want, they want to be able to uh, reach their own readers and not be edited and not be. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it can work for everybody or if it, but it's, um, yeah, it's the old, it's funny that the oldest model comes back. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, it's, and it's also, of course, on the surface, I'm thinking the, the, the Patreon model that would be yeah. uh, for, for, for all kinds of, of, of uh, cultural activists and, uh, um, or publicists and, and comic artists too. But yeah, and you're thinking, okay, you, you have then to do sort of the editorial and, and, and publicity work that normally you would think that the publisher should do. Uh, would right. have done yeah, but then the again the reality is that mostly if you're not like a success author then the publishers actually don't really do much so they can't also often not do much with a book that's not going by itself so so then they they're they're better at like um supporting stuff that's already running and the um instead of uh unlike create so so we always have, have to kind of create our little you know the 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 circumstances for us to get going uh, and to continue going, whether we are with a traditional publisher or, or like, yeah, with, with a direct connection to readers on, on Patreon or, or, or through this uh, subscription models like uh, Kickstarter stuff. But um, it also works better for people who are not aiming the book is sort of another project. They just put their work up online. Yeah. And that's what yeah. you're getting for the subscription. You're not get, even getting the book necessarily. But yes. There is yeah. a book yeah. somewhere down the line, but maybe the book gets sold to a publisher anyway. I mean, it's a great, yeah, yeah. It's a good possibility to, to connect with people. And if they're willing to, if everybody yeah. chimps in, ships in a little, I guess it works for some very, very well, for others, maybe not. And I mean, like 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 everything. And uh, for for this, uh, for the Police on Taunt book and, and the next one, yeah, the, the, luckily the in Belgium they get some subsidies also for publishers. So they, this is about saying expensive production. Um, and we we have, for instance we normally in Germany if I do a book I'm I work with my own scans for instance I deliver my scans to the publisher and and here for for Christian Town we got like the best uh, uh, Belgian uh, uh, lithographer to to do the scans and he's working with. Uh, biggest names in photography and, and fine arts and 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 really he pushed it so close to the originals the, the through, through the four color process that is it's quite fascinating and we could not do that on this level but yeah the publisher can can ask for money from the cultural ministry to to finance things like that even though the 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 numbers i mean but what do, do we sell off this book maybe one one thousand four hundred copies something comp, copies something like that which is for this type of book is really good right now in in france belgium but not enough to to you know pay all the people who worked on it mm. so and i mean we we don't really get paid <laughs> so we, we get like the yeah, the normal the eight eight percent split by two from the publishing house so uh, yeah so, yeah, I would not bother to. Right. The other model is to, you teach and then you, um, that subsidizes your work. Right. I mean, we're getting back to the subsidy idea, but because I, that's the one thing I wrote a long time ago and is, is a preface for an anthology, uh, um, but it still stands, I would say. Um, in, in Berlin, like the, the, I think the median, like uh, uh, subsidies per sold peer, peer the ticket. The city gives gives like eighty or ninety euro. That that are the costs behind it that are not paid for by the by the audience. So um, I was just saying polemically, uh, but also kind of it's not. But yeah, it's kind of real. If if you would get if you uh, each book that we print up and, and put on the market, you know. <laughs> If you could get like 90 euro per book to, to pay everybody involved and then we would pay of course people you know the people uh, from the distribution there's like the the people doing the lights for in, in the theater you know or the or the or selling the tickets so everybody has to be paid and um and, and, and but books in germany are seen just as a commercial product largely so there is some subsidies but 
not that many. They're more around stuff. There's like the literature houses, and then you get money for for readings and for lectures and for this and that, and workshops. And um, I like the French model where they have the the uh, Centre National du Livre, and they so this is centralized, and 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 everybody can apply for grants. Uh, the the authors and publishers, people who do book in the French language, so I can apply from Germany if I do it in French language originally. And uh, and every kind of, they just say book. It's not like in, in Germany it's then for literature and then there's a special thing for art books and so on. And there's just a, a catalog, a comic, uh, a poetry a collection. It's all a book. Yeah, that makes the most sense to me. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's, um, it's a good question. How, um, whether and whether when you make work that doesn't have a self um, sustaining audience or not a big enough audience, um, is it is that uh, is that one of the great things about comics that could sell you know a million copies the, the early comic books and they had this fanatic readership um, mm. that how people, how cartoonists lost touch with that. I mean, a lot of it was built, you know, comic books were not, um, they were just sold on newsstands, right? That wasn't like a newspaper comic strip. It was, I mean, the book. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I had to had, I was, was uh, connected to this uh, at one point in, uh, earlier in my career when I did a comic called um, De Flaneur, together with another uh, artist uh, called Tim Dinter, who was drawing it, I was writing it, and it was based all on observations I made in Berlin. So it's kind of semi-documentary, um, very essayistic. And, and there I very consciously constructed this comics for the newspapers. It was in the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, so one of the biggest new newspapers of Germany. And so it really had to, I wanted to do something that's very dense and, and very, but we taken from, from observations in everyday life. So. Uh, in all kinds of circumstances of, of our culture and and also engaging with what the, um, the paper was would stand for so i'm so frankfurt Allgemeine zeitung is quite uh, conservative a more right-wing uh, um, bourgeois um, paper and so and at the time they had like this this uh, a little bit of a, of a campaign some articles that glorified the prussian uh, king and or kings and 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 then I, I put this in the comic, you know, like, like in some stories that, that I observed. I put, but I put in like our, our main character. He was and also very, very pro-monarchistic. But so, so, um, so uh, the, the, the concept was actually a philosophical exercise also like, taken from, from Georges Bataille, uh, uh, who once uh, responded to, to the notion of boys, uh, not boys, sorry, Freud, Freud's uh, uh, um, the Unbehagen in der Kultur, also the, like the, the discomfort in culture, whatever the, the English title might be. So, and, and, and Bataille just said, like, yeah, you should take pleasure from this discomfort. And I was thinking, oh, everything that I see should be a source of pleasure and of aesthetic uh, um, um, yeah, aesthetical pleasure. So, so this this main character we developed. Uh, he thinks everything is beautiful and describes it through this aesthetic, uh, um, philosophical, uh, very strict concept. So, um, and so also then when when the, when the newspaper where the strip happens is, is glorifying monarchy. Uh, so he has to find something about that. Uh, he 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 looks at the the at the um, government uh, area in, in Berlin, at the whatever the politicians on the, you know walking by and then or, or, or unseen behind uh, closed doors and whatever, but um, reflects on that. But says, yeah, this is democracy and it's aesthetically much less uh, so, so, so satisfying than monarchy and blah blah blah. And, but he goes so far that it's it's positivistic, but it it really hurts. And then um, yeah, so it's plays with the it's it's a game with the the editors of the paper and they got it they yeah said uh, i was a, a bit afraid i would just think yeah it's very nice but they said ah oh, the, the comic is quite nasty so um they yeah this is a it's a it's a paper for debate so um so but there i was talking to a non-specified uh audience people who are not comic readers so that's mm -hmm. was very very interesting for me and and, okay. and something no, i like uh, also. i built my whole audience out right, yeah, of yeah, yeah. readers. I was in yes. weekly newspapers. These people said, I don't read comics. I would never pick up a comic, but I now I read your strip. I'll buy your... So 
So, I mean, there, there is, um, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. actually, we quoted you, and and when when we first asked you for some strips for the anthology I did uh, a long time ago with uh, my German publisher, the Wand Verlag, we put a few of your strips in, and then yeah, we had to convince you to be in the comics anthology. I remember you. Oh, yeah. You said, "I'd rather." You answered, "I'd rather be in a in a in a magazine about furniture or, 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 or scuba diving <laughs> journal," and, <laughs> and we we put it in the front oh. of the book your quote so um no i think it was, um, uh, because I mean, by the way i'm also ben's uh, german translator of the oh yeah, right. York. One comment. <laughs> right i didn't should be mentioned i don't, I don't hmm? think i knew that wait what yeah do you know the, I, I also the, did here this is the, the german I edition i did I the really book design and the translation of the you never got this uh, you got it i have it but i haven't looked at it maybe i forgot yeah. i must have known yeah yeah, yeah. No, yeah, we were on, on uh, at the book launch together. So. But that's the, the thing is, um, you know, it's something that that when comics were in, interesting comics that were in sync with popular culture, they can be maybe not with everybody, but with you know enough as many people as watch some uh, television show, they could be this. Um, yeah, I, mean, there are some, I don't know if it has to do with the academization of comics that they're now taken seriously that that just killed their popular appeal for yeah. some people I, mean, so I don't know I don't know what did it but it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a good question it's just interesting I mean we have to be kind of open for the uh, yeah for, for the uh, multi-layered um, possibility of this or, or, or problems if you will because I see myself as somebody as does Dominique Goblet uh, very explicitly as uh, people who also develop maybe the, the, the form itself uh, um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a scientific way, if you will. So that's a, a concept of, of a science as art or art as science uh, as, as established by thinkers like Paul Feyerabend would be like a, one philosopher standing for this, but he brings back the old um, Greek tradition in a way. So, um, but to say, okay, we, we develop something we further develop the language of comics and we don't expect to have a big audience right away with that. But at the same time, I think for me and Dominique, it would be experimental to do uh, 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 like, uh, as they say in French, like a, a grand public comic, like a, for, for a big audience, you know, consciously. Like like a, if a David Lynch says, okay, I have to, he does Twin Peaks for the television. Yeah, it's a little bit different. You have to do the, you know, you do your thing. You want to be yourself, but you have to do it in a way that, you don't completely, by design, uh, uh, um, conceptually already lose the audience. So that's not possible in television. So for me, it would be interesting always to to consider potentially going into or trying something that's that's maybe with a publisher for that that aims at a bigger audience. So that could be, or a certain project would make sense, you know, now in this context, and would not make sense with Frimok. Because yeah, with a with an experimental smaller publishing house here, yeah, you also by design don't don't reach certain certain audiences, right? Because they will, will not find the books. So, right. Anyway, but that's, uh, we'll see what happens if we get through the uh, pandemic. One one of our next projects actually also we were work, working on on the script no, right now for a comic for children. So that's yeah, certainly. Uh, a new thing for us, even if it's it's all this time comics for yeah. children. But, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so thank you for staying up so late. But my pleasure. Uh, my we're pleasure. out where the new cosmopolitan doesn't observe time zones, so I don't. No, know. No, it's now uh, three twenty here in, uh, in Germany, and um, oh, right. um, like uh, at ten, I have the next seminar. So <laughs> Greenwich Mean Time, right? We don't go by our local time zones it's very provincial but absolutely yes so we'll see you <laughs> and so, i mean yeah to to this this whole thing the advantages and disadvantages of this situation i always think okay it's, it's really a cliche but for us comic artists there was quite a lot that was breaking away exhibitions uh, readings uh, lecture tours but still i mean my main work is the same it's, it's staying at my table Right. Not coming to New York and <laughs> doing the lecture there, which would have been nice, of course, yeah. but we wouldn't have done it because, uh, yeah, 
Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Have a great um, night. That was a great picture show you put on. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Yeah. And we'll thank uh, you for the invitation. Thank you everybody for, for listening. And, uh, yeah, that was great. Thank you.